Hi, I'm Joe from PH Tennis, and today we've got the new Babolat Pure Aero 2023. Hugely popular racket, so we're really excited to uh, have a look, have a go. So, first impressions. I don't think it's gonna be a pain job for everyone. It's, it's not really a pain job for me. Having said that, the racket that I play with, I don't really like the look of, but I like the way it feels, and that's what's more important. So when we get on court, we're gonna worry about how it feels and not how it looks. So what's new in this racket? What's in place now is the NF Squared Tech, and that's actually made from flax fiber, so a, a, nat a more natural fiber, supposed to give us more feel on contact. Let's see if that's the case. What else is new um, is the string bed, which they've tightened up. It's still a 16 by 19 pattern, but they've tightened up that bed to give it more control. Um, the spin grommets still remain, although they're now cone-shaped rather than oblong as they were before, but almost guaranteed to give lots and lots of spin, as is the arrow's way. We're gonna get on court now and give it a try. We've strung them up with some RPM Blast, a la Rafa Nadal. Let's see how it goes. So we've just come off court. Our team of coaches have all had a play with the new Pure Aero from Bablat, 2023 edition. If you're someone who plays with a lot of spin and doesn't really like to make a lot of mistakes and is someone who's quite consistent, I mean, this racket is definitely for you because yeah, it generates so much spin. I think that what you get with that spin is you get a real confidence in whipping up the back of it like Rafa or really cut, cutting through it. And whatever spin you want to get out of it, it will give you all of that spin. It will give you everything. Um, do you hope it will? I didn't find it as exciting. It was a lot harder to generate any power out of it, or it was, um, uh, yeah, kind of, yeah, nothing. There, there was. It didn't feel like there was much, much pop to it. I'd say that if you're struggling with some tennis elbow, if you're struggling with sort of arm injuries in general, maybe just string it a little bit looser or choose a softer string um, rather than anything too hard because it does feel quite stiff. It's definitely a racket because of the spin that you can put onto it. You can use the angles of the court a lot more, so you can kind of whip around the side of the ball a little bit, generates a little bit more uh, ball spin to get that ball out to the side a little bit more. The lightness of the head makes the racket feel manoeuvrable. So at the net, if we're trying to find little touches, little angles, also quite nice for that, but very solid throughout, um, very easy to play with. But overall, it feels like a, um, a step sort of, as well as a sort of retro look, it's almost sort of the, the aero sort of gone back slightly in looking at those older models, uh, like the model that Rafa actually uses, and gone something closer to that. So as well as just the look, you've also got the sort of feel of those of those old ones. A little bit more control, a little bit more bite, still loads and loads of spin, really quality racket. Hi everyone, Josh from PH Tennis, and this is the Babolat Pure Drive, uh, the latest Pure Drive in a whole range. Uh, I found it's been going on for a long time. Um, I've been a Pure Drive user since I was about 14, so going on for almost 20 years of, of Pure Drive action. And, and I love it for the power. It is just pure power. It's a bit of a sledgehammer. Um, it's super stiff, super strong, um, and that's why I really like it. But we've gone out there with our whole team of coaches to try it, to review it, to compare it against other power rackets on the market and also the other kind of other frames that you can get now. The aesthetic, obviously Pure Drive has always been blue. This one no different. It's nice and I think it's a nice matte blue. I don't think it, it's not a wow paint job, but there's nothing wrong with it. No one's gonna look and go, oh, it's ugly. Um, and also, Babolat very uh, kindly for those people who love to, to match. I've got a whole range of Pure Drive products, um, as shown now by my model. So you've got a hat, you've got a hoodie, you've got sweatbands, shoes, and a cap. Beautiful. Thanks for that. So the Pure Drive range is complete. It starts from the super light and goes all the way up to a tall version. Um, that's quite straightforward. Each weight goes up by 15 grams. Um, we're going to be play testing the 300 grams, which is kind of the most popular, most popular weight for the Pure Drive. They're all 100 square inch heads. They're all 1619 string patterns, um, and they all have similar playability in terms of the elliptical frame. Uh, as you can see, the frame's very thick and round, which gives it structure and strength. So you get a lot of stability when you contact the ball, and it's that stiffness on contact that gives you the access to the power. 
Um, so that's kind of what we're going to be looking for. We're going to go on court with our team of coaches. Uh, we're going to test it out and we'll let you know how we get on. We have just been testing the Babalat Pure Drive. Now this is Babalat's kind of power racket. It's the stiffest in the range. And a little side note, it's my racket. It's a racket I've used since I was 14, 15 years old. So I'm really comfortable with it. I understand the, the limitations that it has, which we'll talk about, but I also really love the benefits and the benefits are big. Without a doubt, it is very, very powerful. Um, I think that for, if you've got a short compact swing and you, and, and you want easy access to power, can't go wrong. Being so stiff and chunky with a lot of structure in the throat, it means as you contact the ball, the racket stays strong. Um, so you get really easy access to power. You get very little dwell time, but you do get a lot of punch, a lot of pop when you contact the ball. So that works great, especially when you're defending. Actually, people often think power racket must be good for attacking players. Not necessarily. Because it's a power racket, it allows you to access power easily. So when you're defending, maybe with a short, uh, more counter-punching swing, using pushes, using punches, jabs, those sorts of feelings, this racket's gonna really come into its own and give you some, uh, a lot of support when doing it. It's a bit too much of a sledgehammer for me. I don't feel like I get enough feel. Um, so if I'm, if I'm whacking the ball from the back of the court and that's my aim, then great. But as soon as I've got to adapt and I've got to be a little, show a little bit more guard and use the racket in different ways, that's where I think it falls short of something like the E-Zone or in fact the head boom. On the kind of flip side to that, when it's time to accelerate the ball, when the ball is mid-court, slow, and you've got time, it's a hard beast to master. It's hard to control. There's very little flex, if any, in the racket. So there's little control to be had. Stiff as a rod. So you get loads of power, but you don't get a lot of that softness that you sometimes need when playing an all court game. Very good if you want to hit big. Probably not great if you want to play from all over the court in different ways. You need to really master creating spin um, and playing, uh, adding pace to the ball with a pure drive. But when you do, and you find a way of adapting to use it, all those benefits we said at the top, counter punching and using the pace on the ball effectively, more than make up for it. But those people who maybe aren't used to it and have, have, have used a more flexible frame, then coming to try this, you might be like, blimey, I can create all this pace off the ground, but I've lost all my touch and all my feel. And that's really where the trade-off is. You're getting the most power in the easiest way, but you're losing a little bit of that touch and feel. Hi everyone, Josh and Joe from PH Tennis, and we're here today to review the head boom. You got this? No, no, not oh. anymore. Oh, really? Yeah, it started off as you got this, now, explosive playability. Oh, okay. But I mean, you've still got it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the boom is head's power racket. It's only marginally more powerful than, a, say, a speed, radical gravity, um, but it is to fill their kind of power end of the spectrum. Um, so they're expecting it to play kind of quite stiff and quite powerfully, similar to Ezo and Pure Drive, etc. Um, but we'll see. And of course, it's endorsed by Coco Goff and Lorenzo Mazzetti. Let's be very, very clear for those people that are watching there. They don't necessarily play with this racket. Yeah, so people have been really hot on this. <laughs> they're, not, they're not happy when they we say They don't like when we say Coco Goff uses this exact racket. She may do. Maybe. She may not. Probably not. Don't be upset by it. So first impressions, really good looking racket. That sort of mint, I would call that a mint. Yeah. And there and the black, and anything matte black is always gonna be uh, big in my book. Um, so yeah, beautiful looking racket. Um, the, the tech that's been added, as with all of the head range now, is the auxetic. And the auxetic is a fantastic material. You really love auxetic, don't I you? I do. It, ex it expands, it contracts on contact, so it gives loads and loads of flexibility through the string, stiffens up on contact, essentially trying to give you uh, the best of both worlds and that flexibility and stiffness to create power and control. The holy grail. Correct. Uh, yeah, paint job, great. It's got kind of Tiffany vibes. Oh, yeah. 
So sure. my wife loved it and, <laughs> and got one, purely on the <laughs> Tiffany vibes. Brilliant. Um, so yeah, uh, a very nice uh, looking racket and stands out, it's different. Um, it's it fresh, does, yeah. Fresh job. So we strung uh, one up with some head links tour. We're gonna get on court and we're gonna give it a try and let you know what we think. The Head Boom, you got this. Head's newest racket in the range, and it is Head's answer to the Pure Drive, to the E-Zone. It's their power racket. Brand new racket, it's got the Oxetic in it, like the all, the all the new Head range, and the Oxetic just makes them feel great. They feel really, really nice. Unlike the Pure Drive, you do get a lot more feel from this. You do get some flex, and then that stiffening on contact, so you still get the power as it, as it stiffens, but you've got the flexibility created by the Oxetic. Really easy to use, really powerful. You could I use maybe a little bit too much power? Feels quite head heavy, um, which I personally don't like very much, but it's one of those rackets you just pick it up, you can play straight away. It's a really, really nice frame. Like all the head frames at the moment, we think because of the Oxetic, it plays really nicely. It's definitely more powerful compared to something like an extreme or a speed um, but it doesn't lose uh, out too much in terms of feel or spin creation yeah but we just played a whole set with this and actually it's really easy to play with that's the best thing i'd say about it like i play with the head speed so used to the head family um, yeah i actually really like this for serving actually probably found it easier than my speed um, if you like something like the pure the Bablat pure drive you like the e-zone it feels like a slightly nicer slightly easier version of those two rackets if you are comparing it to something like a pure drive or an e-zone though it's definitely not as powerful um it definitely feels like there's more flex in it than those rackets and it's for that reason why whilst a very very nice racket if you are categorizing it as a power racket and comparing it to the other power rackets it probably doesn't quite stack up the same you can't go wrong with a head boom, especially if you're a club level player. So yeah, all around, very easy to pick up and play with straight away, recommend it. Hi, Joe and Josh from PH Tennis, and it's a big day today. Big day. Because we've got one of the most famous ranges of rackets Iconic. in the world. Iconic, Iconic ranges. Used by Pete Sampras, Roger Federer, Dan and Evans, Alfie Hewitt. Exactly. Ah, uh, that is the Wilson Pro Staff. Woohoo! The full Pro Staff range will now still have the RF at the top. I'm thinking that Wilson at some point will maybe do a legacy RF, new paint job, something quite cool. I, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing, but I think there's got to be something in the pipeline for that. We've got here the 97, 315 gram, classic. First impressions. We're slightly dubious about the Desert Brown, but like all of the Wilson um, new paint jobs. This is great. And it actually, it's colour shifting like the blade and like the ultra is. Yeah. Um, we played with it um, on a clay court in the bright sunshine and it had that really like popping sort of orange come out of it. You can see the orange detail on the side. And then under lights later that evening, it had like a purple tinge yeah, as well and some sort, of, some sort of green coming through. So again, beautiful racket. I'm, I'm never going to like it as much as the plain black pro stuff because I think plain black rackets are really cool. But it's a beautiful job. I also think in our restring job here with the gold 4G soft has really set it off nicely looks wise. So what's new in this racket? Well, very little in the 97 as you might imagine. It's a classic, why change too much? What they have got is paradigm bending. What it is, it's actually named after the, it's a boating term and it comes from the shape of the hull. So the idea is that the paradigm bending in the racket allows the head to flex more and therefore come round and it's that shape, that kind of concave shape of a hull of a boat, that's what it's similar. So Wilson's idea is the, the Pro Stuff 95, which was one of the most famous and popular Pro Stuff, sort of trying to replicate the feel of that in the 97, in the new 97. And they did that by creating the same amount of flex and it's the paradigm bending that is doing Because it's the flex that was the big selling point of that 95, right? Yeah, so Interesting. that is paradigm bending. You heard it here first. So in the, in the spirit of Wilson's sort of move towards greater sustainability, obviously the Wilson Trinity and the Trinity Pro, Pro for their balls, um, the racket is made with um, better sustainable products, both in the butt cap, the grommets, and the bumper. Sustainable. 
Uh, we've strung it up with some 4G soft, which if you watch our string review, is our one of our top strings. Beautiful string, loads of dwell time. <laughs> dwell time. <laughs> So we've just come off court and um, we've been play testing the new Pro Staff and I have here the 97, a 315 gram version. Um, first impressions playing, um, really nice, uh, especially on the front foot, especially when the ball uh, was flatter and you were trying to kind of play through the court. Um, it really gave some really nice feedback. Um, as the Pro Staff kind of has always been, feel and precision, um, a kind of their accuracy, it goes where you want it to go, it goes where you expect it to go um, and it's definitely got some flex to it um, and yeah so that makes it feel quite comfortable when you're using it. Initial thoughts is it's a pro stuff, very very similar to the old one, the version 13, 12 and 11, it hasn't changed much to be honest in the, over the last few iterations. Um, basically I think Wilson take the approach of if it ain't broke don't fix it, it's a perfectly lovely racket. It felt to me easier to use um, than the previous version. Pro Stuff has always been a racket that I really wanted to be able to play with, but never felt that it was forgiving enough for me able to get away with it. And this feels slightly different. That might be because we tested this on clay, whereas often we're testing on Astro. That might, that might have had an impact, the ball sitting up a little bit more, it's a little bit slower. Um, but I felt like this was much easier to get on with in the previous version. It's got all of those Pro Stuff tra traits, right? It's very, very precise. Um, volleying's very, very crisp. Um, but you are gonna struggle to generate power unless your timing is spot on. And I think that's the reason that the Pro Staff um, is difficult. Um, it's very rewarding when it's right, but very tricky if not. And this is, this is no different really, albeit this may be slightly softer, slightly easy, slightly more maneuverable than the previous version. Very specific, the type of people who can use it. Um, the one thing I've always found with Pro Staffs, and it's no different with this, is it's so hard to get it right that you're almost a bit surprised when you do. So because of the smaller head size, it's got a smaller sweet spot, but a way more, uh, way more fun sweet spot, you could say. So when I'm playing with it, I'm trying and trying and trying and trying, and then as soon as I get it, the ball just absolutely rockets away. If you're a Pro Staff user, this isn't going to disappoint. This has got everything that you want and that you love in a Pro Staff already. And similarly, if you're, if you're kind of hedging your bets and you think like, I'd love to be playing with the Pro Staff 97, but not quite, not quite feeling like I'm getting it in the middle often enough, maybe give this a go because it's got a little bit of something slightly easier to it. If you're trying to kind of rip a load of topspin, a little bit tougher. This is definitely for those cleaner, flatter hitters. Um, equally on serve, it was quite not, it was okay for first serves, but trying to hit like big kick serves was quite hard work if I'm honest. Um, volleying though, so crisp. Um, that's kind of a pro staff trait um, all the way through, but so, so comfortable, so easy. Um, yeah, when you nail it on a pro staff, you get all the benefits. Um, and that was definitely true of this new version 14. It's a heavy racket, 315. So it's a heavy, small head, tiny sweet spot. It's gonna be hard to use. So definitely a racket to try first you've got to really make sure that you can make this racket work for you okay so we've just finished playing with the new pro Staff version 14 97 and um it's it's excellent as you'd imagine it's a pro Staff. it very little has changed we talked vaguely about the paradigm bending and uh, we're vague on it because there's very little information about it. Um, I do think that whether, whether that's the tech or whether that's just a, a slight change in the racket, um, this is slightly, slightly easier to play with. I found this easier than the, than the previous version. I'm assuming that's because of the paradigm bending technology, it's, but it still gives you all of that that you want from a pro staff. It's deadly accurate. The ball goes exactly where you want it to when you get it right. And that's always been the issue for me with Pro Staffs is that it's just very hard to get it right often enough to make the racket worthwhile for me. This is a Pro Staff in an absolute classic form. Um, if you love a Pro Staff, you're gonna love it. If you don't and you've struggled with them, it's, this isn't gonna be uh, a, a transition where suddenly you can play with a Pro Staff. For that, you probably wanna look at the X. Fantastic racket, wish I could play with it, wish I could be Federer.
If you like this review, subscribe to our YouTube channel for all reviews as the rackets come out. We get our, we get our reviews out as soon as the rackets are available to us, which means we, sh we should be getting them out before they're available in the shops. Follow us on Instagram, subscribe to our channel for more reviews. Hi everyone, Josh from PH Tennis. Very excited today to share with you the new Pro Staff X. This is the newest addition to the Pro Staff family, um, and we think it's going to be a great way of getting new uh, players into the Pro Staff and also those who have played with the Pro Staff and, and left to come back to it. So the difference is still 315 grams, similar to, to 97, the, the kind of main racket, but it's a 100 square inch head. Um, so that's going to make it more playable. The sweet ball's going to get a bit bigger, um, should be. A, a lot more forgiving, should be easy to access spin. Um, so those are all things when we get on court and try it, we'll be looking to see, do we lose some of that kind of ultra precision and that incredible impact feel you get with the traditional pro stuff? And what's the offset between losing some of that but gaining some kind of easier access to power, easier to generate spin and that little bit more forgiving? Um, so we're gonna weigh those two things up and see. So 4G soft, 53 pounds, one of our favorite strings. Um, we're gonna head to the clay and check it out. So the Pro Staff X, uh, the new Pro Staff in the range, still the 315 gram weight, but the 100 square inch head. Um, and it's great. So easy to use, kind of could pick it up, so much more comfortable and forgiving than the, three, than the 97, um, as you'd expect. Um, and it definitely will allow so many more players, so many more of you guys, to use the Pro Star family, which is traditionally a very hard racket to use because of its narrow beam and, and difficulty to, to use it. It says version 14, but it's the first time they've ever made this racket, so it's a version one. And strangely, I don't think it's a pro stuff. It doesn't feel like a pro stuff, doesn't play like a pro stuff. And looking at it, I don't know if you can see that, it doesn't look like a pro stuff either. Um, why I think it works, and I, I'll be honest, I really, really like this straight away, very first shot. Oh, this is nice. Um, it feels very soft, it feels very spongy, very flexible. Um, it almost feels more like a blade or a head speed than it does feel like a pro stuff. The issue a lot of players have with the speed, for example, or the, or the blade is, that the, is the weight. They're 300, 305 grams. If you want something heavier, you have to move up into the tours and the pros. But then they change the string pattern and they just don't quite work as rackets. So basically this feels to me like a heavy blade, which is perfect because you've got that same feel, you've got the same control, but just with a bit more weight behind the ball. Very, very interesting. I think that what you get um, that's less pro staffy, shall we say, is a little bit more power. It's definitely more, it's definitely more forgiven as you'd expect because we've gone from a 97 inch frame to a hundred. Um, I was really excited about this racket because it kind of, it almost feels like a sort of entry level pro staff um, and it's very easy to use. It's very, it's very nice, but I didn't find it that exciting. It's not generating loads of power. Um, it is giving you some precision as you expect from a pro staff, but not in the same way. So it almost to me feels like uh, if, you, if you're going pro staff, go pro staff um, and go for that 97, go for that ultra precision. Whereas this is sort of hedging its bets. I've, it's quite similar to the blade, albeit the, the sort of better, uh, better feel on the blade. I prefer the blade overall to this. And if I was gonna choose between this and the 97 i would actually go for the 97 despite it having its um, limitations in what i'm able to do with it based on my playing ability and the way the racket is built great for forehands great for backhands great for serving incredibly easy to use and it just it just feels really really nice so initial impressions couldn't be more pleased with this i'm going to give it significantly more play time see how i get on for serving you get more pop and easier access to power um, with with the hundred, and that's and that's really nice. And the same if you want to generate more spin from the back of the court, this the hundred is going to do that for you. And in that sense, it's really nice. If you've always used pro staffs and you like them, then stick with the ninety sevens. But if you've tried pro staffs, maybe you've gone off. A lot of people kind of start with a pro staff and move to a blade or have moved to a clash. This is definitely one to try and get you back onto the pro staff range because it's that slightly bit easier to use. So the Pro Star FX, um, we've been on court and used it and kind of the initial feedback was really positive. It's definitely a great new addition to the range um, and it does kind of what we expected. 
you lose a little bit of that kind of precision um, and kind of impact feel and feedback that you get through your hand that you get with the pro stuff. But you only lose a little bit of that, but you gain a lot of playability, a lot of ability to generate more spin, generate more power with a short swing, which suits me. Um, so I definitely really, really liked it. I think that there'll be a lot uh, of pro staff players who have gone off the pro staff who might come back into the range with this. Equally, there might be some people who kind of tried the 97 and wanted to like it, but couldn't quite get hold of it. Um, this will be an option that is definitely worth trying um, to do. Equally, people who use blades, but maybe want a bit more weight, this is gonna be something that's definitely worth trying, um, even though it's obviously a 100 grain tread rather than a 98, because it's that narrower beam, you're gonna get a similar feel um, to the blade. So overall, a good new addition is gonna get a lot of more people into the pro staff range, um, and we think it's great. So give it a go. Hi, Joe and Sean from PH Tennis, and we're super excited today because we've got the brand new Head Radical. So this is the what generation, Sean? They don't do generations. They don't do generations. This is the 2023 version, as used by Taylor Fritz and Andy Murray. Kind of as used by. First impressions of the racket. I think it looks good. It's bright, like, like all the Radicals have been, but I think it's slightly toned down now because it's, it's lost the silver in, in a sort of uh, a dark blue. Yeah, the addition of the blue is quite a nice touch. It definitely tones down the orange, but it still has that nice pop. Um, definitely at the moment in my top five of racket looks. Oh, what's new in the racket, Sean? So what's new in the racket is the auxetic. That's the only addition that Head has made. Um, the mold is still the same, string patterns are still the same for the MP and the Pro. So all that's new is the Auxetic, which is gonna give it that softer feel that everyone seems to be loving in the, the Head range so far. Yeah, I think the Auxetic has been um, a, a, a fantastic addition to the Head range. What the Auxetic does, it's a material inside that's like a mesh, um, which is which stays loose, you correct me if I'm wrong Sean, it stays, it stays loose as you swing and tightens up on contact. So it gives an extra bit of stiffness as well as flexibility. So while a lot of rackets claim to have flexibility and, and stiffness and power and control, the Auxetic really seems to have done that for head. We're showing up with some head links tour. We're gonna get on court and give it a play test and get a review out for you. I'm Josh from PH Tennis. We've just been on court to try out the brand new head Radical. This is the MP version, uh, 98 square inch head, 300 grams. Now, the Radical is a very well known kind of silo for head. It's been around for a long time, lots of different iterations, um, and this is the latest one. The big new addition, Auxetic. Uh, so we've had a go, and to be honest, it's really good. It's an improvement on the old one. Um, it's really comfortable, really easy to get on with. So we've just come off court with the Radical, um, and as with a lot of the new head rackets, um, really impressed, really, really liked it. One of the reasons that I, I kind of find the head rackets easy to play with myself is that it's just my, the maneuverability. I must say, I, I've always struggled with some of the other beams in terms of getting them around. I'm not sure if it's my single hander or if I'm just a bit of an all-court all player. I like to get around, and the head really is good for doing that. And I must say, this Radical, just like the, with the Auxetic in, is just like my speed in terms of the feel for it. I, I really like it. And I much prefer it to the previous radical. It feels really, really solid, really, really heavy, loads of control, um, which is significantly different to radicals of the past. So very pleased with that. I know we've banged on about Auxetic, but I think it really, it really does make a difference, um, which means that compared to the old one, which we played with at the same time, um, when, you, when you swing through, it feels, it feels light until contact, and then it stiffens up kind of just the right amount. And that's the big difference between this and the old one, really. Normally, we find that when people demo rackets, or when we try them ourselves, that the ground strokes are quite easy to get the hang of. It doesn't take long to adapt to a new racket. It's serving where the problems occur. Um, and didn't happen with this. this is, I felt like I've been serving this radical forever. Um, five, six serves, and it's like I've been playing with it for ages and ages. Personally, I found serving with it really, really joyful. Really nice, really easy. 
straight away on my first serve, getting loads of pop, getting some power, um, and it really seemed uh, probably the easiest record to serve with uh, out of the head range, M maybe minus the speed, um, which is pretty close uh, to the radical itself. It particularly works when you're really swinging through it. So on the serve, it's great. You're swinging through really fast, and I think that's probably where the exotic really comes into its own. It's that um, going from flexion to tension, I guess, um, that really makes it feel really good. Like lo loads of pop on the surf, surprising amount of pop on the surf. As you'd expect, it's really sort of maneuverable. It's really versatile. Um, it's quite easy to use straight away. Good on volleys um, and, and, and sort of just a really good all-rounder. The Radical is designed to be versatile. It's, you know, the clues in the name, or the advertising, I should say. So Radical versatility, it is like volleyed well, sli took slice well, took spin well powerful it's good easy to serve with well balanced so all round it's a very very tidy racket i think definitely an upgrade i mean this exotic i'm sold on it um I, it's going to be hard for me to move away from it now um i know these new technologies come out every so, so often but i'm really on board with this one um it does have that flex and that movement it's, it's so easy to swing compared to other frames for me um, but on contact yeah I, it's it's right where i want it to be so i, I really like it normally i use the um the head speed so it's not massively different racket. This feels slightly stiffer. It feels slightly more powerful, but balance wise, it feels very, very similar. So maybe that's part of the reason, but it's a very, very nice racket. It feels far more solid, far more well-made than the old Radical, to be honest. Um, not 100% sold on the looks yet, but as often is the case with new rackets, it takes a bit of time for them to grow on you. So overall, if you're a Radical user, which lots and lots of people are, it's a definite improvement. However, it's similar. You can tell it's the same family of racket, which is great because you're not going to have to relearn a load of uh, different feelings and shots. You can play in the same way that you currently do, but you'll generate a bit more power, it'll be a bit more comfortable, especially when you really start attacking more. The, the exotic in the frame, you can feel it kind of stiffen up um, and you get that extra bit of comfortability. That's a new word, isn't it? Comfortability. Uh, whilst you're on the front foot. It's very similar. To the to the previous version, and we we've, we've played with both simultaneously, and so that's going to be really good if you're if you're a radical user already. It's it's not going to be a big change, um, and I think I think we that's a positive, right? We're going to be you're going to be able to transition straight into this, but have the benefit of that exotic, of that extra bit of stiffness on contact. So it's really it's really nice for that. I think the exotic comes into when when you're swinging. So on the serve on on big ground serves, I didn't like it as much defending um, but I play with an e-zone and, and I think for me that's it's easier to defend with an e-zone because you've got that easy access to power in terms of attacking I think this is really good good maneuverability um, but yeah I struggled a little bit defending to get enough pop to keep myself in points in which I was on the defense so the kind of other records that the radical compares with is actually within the head range as well you've got the speed um, so it's slightly more uh, kind of all rounds than the speed speed a bit more kind of attacking ground stroker, this gives you a little bit more feel, a bit more option for, for some drop shots and some touches. Um, across the other brands, it's probably going up with something like a Pure Strike, um, something like a Blade, and to be honest, maybe not even a Blade actually, maybe more of like a Clash, isn't it? If you consider Wilson's all round the racket is the Clash, this is heads, how do they compare? I'd say the Clash is much more of a control, leans more control, this probably leads slightly more comfort um, with a bit of and power, um, but it's probably a genuine more of an all-rounder, I would say. Um, similar to the Yonex v Call, which I think is quite an all-rounder as well, despite it being promoted as a spin racket, I think this is also a genuine all-rounder. So if you're looking for to be able to play an all-court game, front foot, back foot, defend, serve and volley, drive from the baseline, chips and slices and long attacking forehands, you're gonna get something from it. So we've all uh, play tested the new Radical and overall I think it's got a really good, uh, really good response, really like it. I think to summarise it's definitely an upgrade on the previous version. Um, I think probably the Auxetic, I don't know if we talk about it a lot, has made a big difference so it feels more solid all around. Ben even said it feels that it's been manufactured better and that's it, it does, it does, it feels more solid. It feels solid throughout but it also feels sort of lighter and more flexible um, as you're swinging. Um, and and that's and that's really that's really interesting and it's a really nice quality. Feels very flexible, feels very light, and then tightens up on contact. So, with that in mind, the more you sort of swing or the faster you swing, the more benefits you get 
from the racket and presumably from the auxetic. So serves a great big, uh, big ground toe, it's really good. As you'd expect, it's maneuverable, it's versatile, as you'd expect from a radical. A not massive spin, not massive power, but a little bit of everything, a real, a real all-rounder. So, in terms of who liked it, so Ben and Alex are speed users, and, and they really liked the Radical. Um, they, ben, ben especially um, is, been, is very much married to his speed, but felt like this was a racket he could probably migrate to. Um, and for Josh and I, I appreciate that it's a it's a fantastic racket um, and is an, as is definitely an upgrade. It's just quite a departure from the sort of rackets we use. Josh is a pure driver. I'm an E-Zone, so power rackets, whereas this is definitely um, an all-rounder. So overall, really positive. Again, the Auxetic comes through strong for head. We're looking forward to the release and seeing what you think about it. If you're not already, subscribe to us on YouTube for all the content, all the racket reviews as they come out this year. On a scale of one to 10, this is radical. Oh, he's going to use that. Yeah, he will. He's going to use that, right. Hi, I'm Joe from PX Tennis, and this is Josh. And today we've got the brand new Technofiber T5305, as used by Daniil Medvedev for number one. Um, first impressions, beautiful white frame, very, very white, um, and lovely sort of textured uh, Technofiber detail on the side. Really good looking racket. It doesn't really look like anything else on the market. Very nice. What about the technical yeah. stuff? Well, I, I, yeah, I really agree, firstly. I think it looks great. I'm excited to get on court and give it a go. Um, kind of technical stuff with, with this one, this is a 98 square inch head. It's actually an 1819 string pattern. So not the traditional 1820 or 1619. So we'll see how that plays. Um, and then the kind of the uniqueness is the RS section in the throat. Um, so again, we'll get on court and give that a go and see if we really feel that it gives balance to our game. Excellent. Uh, I think this is strung up with ice codes. Yep, yeah, bit of ice code, ready to go and play. So we just got off court with our team of coaches. Um, everyone's had a really good hit with it. Um, and overall, I think it's really fun. Uh, it's definitely an attacker's racket. First of all, looks wise, it looks great. Um, I love the pattern like around it. I love the white color all the way throughout. And I love the French colors as well. Uh, very French and crab. As the blade, as the E-Zone, those sort of real high quality rackets, that's, that's how this feels. It feels like a really a quality racket. It's definitely, the balance is definitely head heavy. So when you really get a long strike on the ball, you get a real nice pop. Um, yeah, and I think that slightly open string pass in the 1819 or the 20 helps you get a little bit more spin than you would in a more classic like 1820 frame. Um, but yeah, it's definitely the head heaviness that is the main characteristic of the racket. For me personally, I felt like I could whip it a lot flatter than I usually do. So I'm somebody who plays with a fair bit of top spin, but this, this allowed me to hit a lot flatter with it, which uh, definitely brings variety to my, game, to my game, which is brilliant. It's definitely a bit more like head heavy than yeah. my usual racket, so... Um, it feels like it probably ploughs through quite well. Um, yeah, I don't feel it's like as manoeuvrable as I would normally choose, but it probably does get quite good power. Feels comfortable. Probably the one down to probably defending, um, because there's that lack of mass kind of in the middle of the racket. If someone's really attacking you, it's quite hard to counter punch with. But if you like getting on the front foot, you like dominating your rallies, kind of like Daniel Medvedev, right? It kind of makes sense that it's his racket. Um, it's a really, really great option. Really crisp and nice um, on volleys. I really enjoyed volleying with it. It felt very, very comfortable. And that's, that, that's generally how I'd, how I'd feel about the racket overall. Very, very comfortable. I usually use a Speed MP, so it's a bit more maneuverable to me, a bit more balanced. Um, so this one definitely feels like maybe for a bit of a bigger hitter. If you like the T5, if you've used either the last version, the RS, or the previous version, I think this is the best one yet. So I definitely think it's upgraded. Most rackets boast about having good power, good control. I'd say this, as on the attacking side, more on the powerful side, but still enough control for me for someone that plays with an E-Zone. Love the team. Hi, I'm Josh from PH Tennis, and I'm here today to review the new Wilson Clash. This is the second version of the Clash, uh, and the first version was really, really popular, so we're very excited to give this one a try. 
First of all, new cosmetic, lovely red colour, um, and a really nice detail here with the embossed Clash logo. Um, I think it looks great. There's a couple of new technologies in it. The first one is the new 45 degree carbon mapping. Uh, that's designed to give the racket some more flexibility, but also keep some stability in the head. Um, so we need to see how that plays when we get on court. The string pattern's also changed. Uh, the first uh, version, there's a little bit of complaints about there's too much string movement. So on this one, it's now a 1620 rather than a 1619, which should again give us a little bit more control. Um, we're gonna get on court, give it a try, and we'll let you know how we get on. Right, we've just come off court. Uh, we've all had a try with the with the clash. Um, really interesting set of responses. So one of our coaches, Javier, said it was the best racket he's ever used. Um, it seems to be, but it's a little bit uh, marmite as a racket. So the racket, so you need to win the collision. So the racket needs to hit the ball rather than the ball hitting the racket. If you play long, smooth uh, baseline tennis and you're looking for a bit of control, this might be absolutely perfect but it has a shorter swing, counter puncher, serve and volleyer, you might, the, the extra flexibility might create a bit of a problem for you. So if your swing is bigger, that's gonna work for you. It just doesn't really work for me. Whilst Wilson describe it as their all-rounder, we as a collective really feel that it's more control-based than anything else. Um, you get loads of flex in the, in the frame, um, giving you loads of dwell time on the ball and thus the level of control that you'd expect. Overall, we think it's probably great for club players. Um, people who are looking for that extra bit of control, extra bit of consistency on their shots in the baseline, this will really help. Also, anyone with any tennis elbow, wrist problems, sore shoulders, because of the flexibility of the racket makes it really, really comfortable, really, really nice to use. So, if you like a racket that's quite stiff and something with more control, this is probably something that you'd like to try. Similarly, if you use uh, something like a Wilson Blade, uh, or a Head Speed, or a Babolat Pure Strike, and you want even more control, then this might be something to try because the extra flex really does help. Remember, all our records are available to demo in store and online. So if you're unsure, why don't you have a demo, have a go, and see what you think. Hi everyone, Josh from PH Tennis. A quick review of the brand new Wilson Ultra. First impressions. It's a great looking racket. It fits really nicely into the Wilson family alongside the Clash and the Blade. Um, but Ultra's power range is now definitely as striking. Uh, what's new in the racket is like the Clash, it's got uh, the 45 technology in, which allows for more precise flex point. So Wilson can determine exactly where they want it to flex depending on the shot that you're playing. And that's what that's putting in. All the Wilson range is designed for the modern player with quite a long kind of topspin swing. The Ultra is probably the, the most different to that. It's designed for a shorter swing, um, someone who wants easy access to power and uh, quite a nice easy racket to use. So we're going to string it up with some alu power, get on court and see what we think. First impressions in the warm-up was a little bit uncertain. Um, it didn't feel uh, as good as, say, something like a, a Clash or a Blade. Um, but the more we went back to the baseline and started hitting with a bit more tempo and a bit more intensity, it kind of came into its own. You are going to get a lot of power. I think you're, you're getting a lot of power um, when you're when you're really when you're really going for it when you're really attacking. Definitely a really good racket for, say, kind of medium level, strong level club players. Because uh, I felt you could hit the ball fairly consistently, like it doesn't, it really aids you in kind of getting that ball, keeping that ball inside the court. Wilson have introduced a new grommet system, um, and that allows the grommets to compress as you contact the ball, giving a more longer dwell time on contact. And that's part of the reason why it probably feels a little bit nicer the more attacking you are. The more attacking you are, the more string movement you get, the more that grommet system is coming into its own and really helping you. It was sharp on volleys, the sweet spot I think is bigger. Than previously, it felt like I was even on off-center ones. I was getting a little bit more out of it than I would on the previous version. So I think it's a type of racket that, if you are an aggressive player, you have a long swing, you commit to your shots, you try and dominate rallies. I think this will really help you. Um, it gives you a lot more feel than the other power rackets out there. For someone who is looking to kind of 
look to build on their game, definitely a good racket for it. So in comparison to the previous family of the Ultra, um, it's a no-brainer. It's so much better. Um, the Ultra family has been a little bit up and down over the last few generations. Um, this one is definitely an up. Big problem that powerful rackets often have is they lose so much feel and they sort of just end up feeling like these big heavy clubs in your hand. And I think the Ultra does a really good job of still giving some good feedback through your hands. So it is a powerful racket, it's definitely in the towards the power side. But when they say there is some feel there, it's not hyperbole. This definitely plays with more power and more feel when you're playing with that power. So that alongside the looks, if you're currently an ultra user, it's definitely worth a try. I think you'll love it. Hi, I'm Joe from PH Tennis, and this is the Yonex E-Zone 98 version 7. Affectionately known as the easy one, the E-Zone's unique feel comes from being the only power racket in a 98 inch frame. First impressions, racket looks good and improved paint job on the last version, looks good, feels good in hand. Now what's new in this frame? Well, the beam is thicker throughout. The thicker beam means more stiffness, that increase in stiffness means more power. They've also added 2G NAM technology in the throat, which provides stability to balance against this upgrade in power. We've strung one up with Yonex Polytor Pro, Alan Nick Kyrgios, and we're gonna get on court and give it a try. So, we've just come off court. Uh, all our coaches have had a try with the E-Zone 98 version 7. I've played with E-Zones for years um, and, I and I love them and I really like this, um, this new version. Definitely a, lot of, definitely a lot of power, but still enough control um, that makes it a really easy racket to use. Ben and Matt actually found there was a little bit too much power um, and struggled to control single-handed backhands especially. In fact, the two-handed backhand players much preferred the racket to those who play single-handers. Uh, Josh plays a lot of doubles um, and he was looking to see how um, the racket would function for serving, for volleying and found that the, the extra stability that's been added meant for really crisp, powerful volleys and really liked that aspect of it. Overall, definitely more power than the previous version with maybe a small sacrifice in control um, but I think the, that increase in power outweighs the slight lack of control that you get compared to the previous version. Great pop on serves fantastic stability and really easy access to power off the ground. We'd say that the E-Zone is perfect for players with shorter, compact swings, counter punches, looking to use their opponent's pace against them um, and generate really easy power off the ground. It's a great racket for all standards really. It's e the easy access to power means that beginners are really going to like it because they'll get some extra pop. And for more advanced players, it allows for uh, a, sort of a, a, a large option, a, a wide variety of play styles are available to them because of that. The ESO manages that balance between power and control as well as any racket. So if you like a power racket but want a bit more control and precision, or if you're playing with something more flexible but want that extra power without losing too much control, the ESO is ideal. As always, all our rackets are available for demo, both online and in-store. So come on, give it a try. Hi, I'm Joe from PH Tennis and I'm super excited because we've got the new Yonex V-Core version 7 in stock and ready to play. So, first impressions, I don't love the paint job, but then I often don't with the Yonexes, but I do love Yonex rackets. I'm a Yonex user myself, play with an E-Zone, love the previous versions of the V-Core, so really excited to play this. Not so bothered about the way it looks, really interested in how it plays. Now, what's new in this frame? Well, they've widened the top corners of the racket, giving a, a larger sweet spot. We've got a thinner frame around the top of the head, um, adding more maneuverability. We'll see whether that pays off on court when we, when we try it out. There's also a redesign in the, in the throat. You've got Flex Force, which is your Nexus tech in the throat, and that's been redesigned um, with greater stability. 
Um, so we'll see, again, when we get out there, we'll see if it works. We've also got, uh, the grommets have been changed. Now we've got a silicon and oil infused grommet, and, and this is adding 26% less friction, which is gonna allow the racket to snap back into place after contact. Again, we'll see what the tech does when we actually start playing with it. So we're gonna, we've strung some up with some Polytor Pro, and we're gonna try out both the 98 and the 100 on court and see how it goes. In terms of the difference between the uh, 98 and the 100, there's a, big, there's a big difference in the frame size. You've got a width range on the 100, 25.3 down to 22, and it's from 23 to 21 on the 98. So a much, much thicker frame in the 100. Again, we think this is gonna give you more power, a slight uh, reduction in the control, but more power on the 100. Let's see how it goes. We have just been play testing the new Yonex V-Core. This is the seventh version of the racket, or the 2023 version. Um, there are three ranges that have been released, the 95, the 98, and the 100, and today we've been comparing the two most popular versions, the 98 and the 100. So just to give it some context, the 95, obviously that's the square inch of the head, um, so it's a very similar weight to the other two, but that smaller head makes it even more of a control frame than the others. At the other end of the spectrum, you have the 100. And the 100, 100 square inch head, 300 grams, so a little bit lighter. Um, and it's definitely uh, more powerful, the most pa powerful one in this new V-Core family, in this new V-Core range. First impressions from playing with it, absolutely love it. It's very similar to the old one, it's very, very playable. Um, I think with this one, what you're getting with this racket is you're getting a lot of dwell time and a lot of control. I really liked it. Um, I felt almost with the 98 that I could swing as hard as I could and not really make any mistakes. Uh, so definitely a control racket over a power racket. I know it's in the spin range, but I think that for me, got massive amounts of control. You can swing at it and keep the ball in the court, but it's still gonna give you enough if you are blocking, if you're pushing the ball around a little bit, that means that you're gonna get something out of the racket. I mean, I thought, the dwell time was exceptional so like it almost felt like the, the ball was like hooking onto the racket uh, it just felt like he had so much time to strike that ball because it's it's, it's built for it's built for spin it reacts very well when you're gonna when you try and give it any whether that's a lot a big heavy top spin whether that's um cutting under the ball for drop shots for the size you really get a lot out of the racket as you'd expect volleys really maneuverable great kind of punch ball leaves a string bed really nicely um generating a lot of spin. I think that's partly due to the string and the nature of the frame. Um, and serving, like when you nail it, it goes. Um, there is definitely the chance to add um, some pop to your serve with it as well. In terms of generating spin, I didn't feel like it could generate as much spin as maybe like an arrow or something like that, but definitely enough to keep me competitive in the in the point. It's definitely a top spin player's frame. It's definitely an aggressive baseliner who generates lots of pace off the ground, but wants that bit of control, but that help generating that kind of attacking top spin. This is gonna be a great option for you. It's similar in that sense to the T-Fight, which generated a similar amount of spin, but from being head heavy. So by having that extra weight in the head, you kind of get loads of spin. This is designed differently, so you don't feel, you don't feel like you're lugging something like loads of weight away from your body on this, you generate the spin from the construction of the frame and you can definitely feel the quality in it when you contact the ball. Yeah, on, my, on my serve, getting loads and loads of pop. As you may know, I play with an E-Zone and it's not generating the same amount of power as an E-Zone, but you wouldn't expect it to, that's not what it's for. But you are getting plenty of pop. I serve plenty of aces against Josh and against Javi. So definitely getting pop with the serve as well as a little bit of feel and a little bit of touch. Um, really nice on the serve. So compared to the old one, Personal preference, I much prefer the colour pattern on this one. Uh, I prefer the darker red. I love the shade of uh, kind of dark grey and the blue. Uh, I think it's a lot more exciting than, than the older one. Um, in terms of how it plays, yeah, definitely felt there was way more control, way more dwell time on the ball. Probably personally lean towards the 100 because I generally use stiffer, more powerful rackets and the 100 gave me that kind of comfort that I'm used to. Um, in terms of having kind of a shorter, jabbier swing, especially on kind of return of surf punches, jabs, those kind of shots, the 100 gave me 
not effortless power because it's definitely not a, a power racket but more than the 98 did in saying that when i started to open out and go for a bit more on my forehand um or really trying to like rip up the ball and generate loads of top spin you could definitely feel the benefits of that 98 305 ground that slightly bit more weight slightly more control in its in its, in its balance point um and you could really feel the level of spin you could create which gave you that bit of control so there was a time when you're really going well and you kind of felt like you couldn't miss um yeah so especially the 98 compared to the 100 definitely felt with the 98 i could get a lot of accuracy so i can uh, hit the different corners of the box i usually use a 98 so i'm, I'm used to playing the 98 um and between the 98 and the 100 on these new V cores, I think what you get with the 98 is what you'd expect. You get loads and loads of control. Whereas if you go up to the 100, you're losing a touch of that control, albeit it's a control, it's a, it's a, um, it's a control and spin racket. But with the 100, you're going to get a little bit more power. We've strung these with uh, Yonix's Polytor Pro 125, which if you watch our top five string reviews is one of our favorite strings anyway. But in this, it really, really works well. Uh, it is freshly strung. So obviously we're getting all those kind of polyester benefits in terms of um, control and spin from that. Um, if you put a softer string in, I think you get great power and feel and you get spin from the frame. So that could be a great option to try. So in comparison to like the rest of the Yonix range, so definitely not uh, power hitting like the E zone, um, but in terms of control and feel and using it for drop shots, for slices, yeah, really, really, really um, good to use this one uh, because it almost feels like it does it for you. Think on balance, it's a definitely an upgrade. The old V Core, I was really, really fond of as well. I thought it was a very good all rounder racket, um, and I think this still sits in that category, although to Yonex, it is their spin machine. Um, and to other people it feels more of a control fame. I think it's a really good all-rounder and I think it goes up and plays up against very nicely against say a head speed, um, a pure strike, a Wilson blade, a Technofiber T fight as I've said for that kind of modern day long swing heavy attacking topspin, aggressive baseliner, trying to get on the front foot, trying to dominate points, trying to drive your opponent back off the court is definitely uh, a weapon that you will get lots of joy from. Good for touch, it's, good, it's a good amount of power, it's lots of control, it's lots of spin. I felt like this was the best control I've got out of any racket that I've played with in the last year. Superb. We play tested the new V Core and loved it. Um, as you see, you've seen our comments on court, we then had to go and coach, so just played another little bit this morning um, and finishing on what we said. I think the main thing for me as a takeaway is the, is the dwell time and it's been talked about a lot and some people sort of laugh about dwell time and, and is, is that a real thing or how, or how do you describe it. To me the dwell time is a feeling of the ball being on the strings for longer. Now this might be because of the new silicone grommets, it might be because of um, the new design in the throat and the flex force, but it certainly feels like the ball stays on the strings a long, long time, which gives you massive amounts of feel and a massive amount of comfort. And I think this, this is really evident in the, in the vehicle. During our play test, we used um, the old version, the new version, both 98 and 100, and the E-Zone, just to give us a, um, a kind of overview of where that racket sits and the way it works uh, in between in between both the old version of the V-Core, the new version in the 98 and 100, and in the E-Zone, um, just to see how that racket fits in um, amongst the range and how the racket responds uh, differently to those previous versions and a different racket for your next. So as we, as we thought, the two rackets do play quite differently. The thicker frame on the 100 and the bigger head size do mean that you have more power um, and sacrifice a tiny bit of control. The 98 is a real, real control racket with some spin. Um, which, uh, which I loved. Javi and I both preferred the 98. Josh would probably lean more towards the 100, although I love both. So it's really, a, it's really a preference per player. This is a, um, a spin racket in a control frame. And I think that's where the difference, there is some power, but it's not, uh, I would say with the, with the extreme or with the aero, it's a, it's a spin racket in a power frame. And this is not, this is a spin racket in a control frame. Again, you are still gonna get power, but that, that level of control, is, it's, it's right up there with the control rackets of being incredibly easy to use, incredible to make balls, and giving you that control, giving you that feel, 
giving you that touch. Really exceptional. We, we've had some comments previously uh, that say that sort of say, oh, you know, all the all this new tech is. Um, if you can't play with the old existing racket, there's problems in the game. Well, that may be true. There may be pre-existing problems in your game. A racket isn't going to fix that. But I think it's important to note that um, manufacturers of tennis rackets listen to players. They listen to their pros. They listen to all the players that they play with, and they make improvements. They adapt their rackets, and they upgrade them. And this is an upgrade on a previously brilliant racket already. This is still an upgrade. So there you have it. The new V Core is excellent in both the 98 and the 100 it's the 98 for me fantastic rackets give them a try i think you'll love them subscribe to our channel follow us on instagram for more racket reviews more information that you might need to know to improve your tennis game cheers